Welcome to Worship Today, the 15th of August. I'm Reverend Karen Lemouton from the Preston Ribble Circuit. During today's worship time, we'll be thinking about the bread of life. And you may like to have something to eat and drink nearby to help your thoughts. Or you may like to reflect on what you've participated in over your next meal and or drink. Let's take a moment to still ourselves to centre ourselves and focus on our amazing God. As we come to worship, are we hungry for God or satisfied by all the comforts of our life? As we hear God's word, do we want to be fed or have we had enough? Jesus invites us to feast with him. Let us come, for all is ready. Let's pray. O oh God, your word became flesh and lived among us. Thank you that you moved into our neighbourhood, that you are present with us right now, dwelling in our hearts and our homes. Holy God, you are worthy to be praised. Holy Spirit, we worship you. Living bread, we adore you. Amen. We're now going to sing that wonderful hymn from Singing the Faith, number 153. Break thou the bread of life, O Lord, to me. Let us pray. Lord, when we're not as hospitable as you were, forgive us, we pray. When we drain life out of people rather than be life-giving, forgive us, Lord, we pray. When we damage relationships rather than repair them, forgive us, Lord, we pray. When we seek self first, and don't share who we are. Forgive us, Lord, we pray. Make us whole, Lord. Amen. Thank you that when we confess all our wrongdoing and our wayward ways, you forgive us and cleanse us, making us new and giving us a fresh start. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
Our Bible reading set for today is John 6, verses 51 to 58, and I'm reading from the New International Version. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue, argue sharply amongst themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Thanks be to God for his word. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. There are some things in the Bible and at the centre of our faith that are difficult to grasp and even harder to communicate. And John chapter 6 is one of them. Jesus links the bread he gives with his flesh and asserts that those who eat his flesh and drink his blood will have eternal life. How can I talk about this in a way that we will understand? Well, let's give it a go. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, or so they say. When I was undertaking a distance learning course through Birmingham University, I had to attend some residential weekends. As the flights to and from the Channel Islands never seemed to coincide with the start or finish of the course, I would inevitably find myself wandering around areas of Birmingham. I don't know how some people could cope with living or working in the area of Bourneville, as the smell of melted chocolate was overwhelming and always started my tummy rumbling and subsequently searching for the nearest shop to buy some chocolate. Whatever your dietary preferences, there are certain smells that just make you hungry. I wonder, is it fish and chips? Maybe grilled bacon? Then of course there's always freshly baked bread or the smell of ground coffee, not that I like it. However, as we all know, the inviting smells may not be related to nutritional value, just as we know that party snacks or fast food don't always make for a healthy meal, however tempting they may be. We all have a personal relationship with food. Jesus says he is living bread. What's our relationship with him? How often do we feed on his word or drink in his life? There will be times when we snack elsewhere, listening to podcasts maybe, or reading sermons commentaries and reflections from other people. But Jesus invites us to share with him something that is more sustaining. I guess you could liken this to reading all about the appropriate diving equipment and how to dive safely and correctly, but never taking the plunge and learning to dive yourself and building up your own experience of diving. I wonder, what about you at this time? 
How is your appetite? How do you nourish it? Or have you been starving yourself? Take this moment. Turn to Jesus now. Simply ask that you could feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. You will be satisfied. And yet you know each day we need food regularly and drink throughout the day. So remember to nourish yourself on Jesus regularly throughout the day. It can only take a moment. And I can assure you, you will always seek more of the banquet that is provided. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for people who struggle with their lives, for those for whom the chips are down and everything feels like an uphill struggle. We pray for all whose lives have been affected by tragedy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for lawmakers and peacekeepers as they seek to make the world a better place. For police and other uniformed forces and organisations as they deal with challenging situations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the work of hospices as they seek to bring a good end to life. For staff in care and nursing homes who have the responsibility of looking after people who are no longer able to care for themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for parents nurturing children, for teachers, for other school staff, and for the church's role in the nurture of the physically young and the spiritually young. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people living with addictions, for organisations that seek to help them in their search for wholeness and to bring normality back to their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves that we will make the most of our God-given time and that we will live well and be thankful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We close our prayers by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is from Singing the Faith, number 587. I am the bread, the bread of life. Who comes to me will never hunger. I am the bread, the bread of heaven. Who feeds on me will never die.
Blessing. After being fed by you, Jesus, the living bread, send us out to feed others. Now that we're filled with your Holy Spirit, guide our hands as we offer your life to others. Now that we have the promise of eternal life with you, Lord God, give us your love to share with the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless and thank you for joining us for worship. Bye.